Hi everyone, welcome to the, my channel. I am Stephanie and this is Life with Stephanie. Um, if many of you know or don't know, I am a military wife and I am trying to share some videos and content that might be helpful for you. I also like to share just my day-to-day -day life. I will probably have unboxings, things like that, just random things for natural living at times. Um, that sort of thing as well. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to click that bell so you're notified for any videos. Today's video is all about, I have my list here, top four, no, there are five, <laughs> top five deployment tips to get you ready and your spouse ready. You ready for it? All right. Um, part of the reason this is coming to mind is my husband is on deployment and, uh, it's one of the hobbies. One of the things I wanted to start doing is sharing some of my top tips. Um, friends have mentioned that doing that also working on sharing recipes. So, um, lots of little hobbies and things I like to do to, um, to kind of occupy my time, keep my brain active, keep me doing things, but also I love to serve and help others. So these are just some, some of the top five things I can always, we'll probably add more. So if you want more videos like this, be sure to comment and let me know. Um, but these are the top five I can think of right now as it's fresh for me that have been helpful or things I wasn't aware of, um, or, you know, didn't think about and that might be helpful for you. All right. Number one, uh, don't expect the dates that you're given to be exact. All right, so date for when they leave may or may not be exactly what it is. Until you actually have those orders in your hand, um, expect things to change. If you've been in the military for a while and this is your first deployment, you know that happens often that things in the military change a lot. I have a saying that I feel like I need a t-shirt for when I talk to friends or family that are like, why, why does this, you know, why do these things happen? Um, I just say it's the army, it's the military. It could be the same thing, it's the military, you guys. Uh, whatever branch you are representing, yeah, it's the army for me. And um, so don't expect the dates to be exact. I've heard that from a lot of wives who I've been connecting with and talking with that they are not, they don't expect their soldier um, to be home until he's home. So whatever that date is, they don't expect that date to be true. It's they expect them home when they're home um, because that can change a lot. And every branch is different depending on the jobs they're doing, that sort of thing. It can be different. So for me, um, I'm learning quickly. <laughs> don't expect those dates to be exact. Even if it's on their orders that they're going to be home by a certain time, don't expect um, with that, also, if you're friends supporting or family supporting, don't ask, don't bug. Uh, you can ask once, but don't expect you're going to get a different answer if you ask again. Um, because as a military spouse, I, I would personally say, I don't know, he'll be home when he's home. Um, I might know a timeline, but most of the time I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> so that's something to just prepare you for and just, you'll be excited when you're like, He's home. It just, it makes more excitement. All right. Um, two, be prepared to do some shopping. I thought of this tip when it was happening going, I need to have a video talking about some of these things. So <laughs> when they're preparing for deployment, they're going to have a list of things they need. There are things on that list. I was not prepared to be buying or wasn't even thinking of. Um, but get those things that you know are gonna be helpful. And yes, help your spouse kind of figure out, do you really need that? Or is that gonna be supplied? Um, do you really need a hundred pieces of the mil Meg military caffeinated gum? Aren't you gonna get that through the military? Yes, no. Um, be prepared to get some snacks for when they are traveling. Uh, make sure you, I mean, if it's allowed, you also have to just make sure that's okay, but they'll have a list and be prepared to have the phone call. Hey, can you go grab this? Can you go get this? Because when they're preparing to deploy, 
it's just all hands on deck, including the spouse. So you may have to get extra shirts, extra things um, to help them for wherever they're going, whatever they're doing. So be prepared to be spending some money. So hopefully you have that budget. Key, have had that budget and you have those budgets and you have money set aside. Um, like for, we know he gets um, uniform pay. Like he gets extra money to help go towards boots, you know, from, so we make sure we have a budget line for that. And sometimes we might use it, sometimes we won't. So this is a perfect time to have some of that money put aside and make sure you've saved it up to use it for these times so that you're not charging at all, um, going into debt over it, but you're making sure you have some of this. Yes, they can write a lot of that off. So save those receipts for taxes, but be prepared to go shopping. All right. Um, number three, while they are gone, feel free to journal, okay? So depending on the situation, where they're going, or how slow mail is, like you can still send letters, journal every day. A lot of times they just want to know what's going back on back home. So if you're a mom or um, you are a wife or you're a girlfriend or something and they're deploying... Uh, or even if they're going to school, that sort of thing, they're going to be a while and out of touch for a while or time zones are different and you know you're not going to talk to each other um, much. Still good old writing it down journaling. So my husband and I, that's what we both do. That's what's helpful for us. That way he writes down like what his days are like. He did that through all his training. Um, and then I was also journaling and writing letters and writing stuff for him. There's times I didn't always do it and that's okay. But especially in those times, and this was a great tip from a dear friend, um, write, sit down and write to them. Um, talk about your day, share your day. And then when they're back, or if you can send it, send it um, all together. And I know my husband has left some of his with me. And so of course I have a box of letters and I have the stuff that he's journaled. And I love that I can go back and read and I can kind of see what was going on. And he loves it too. He really holds on to some of those. He has some of his favorite letters. He has some of his favorite cars from his mom and dad or, you know, family members, that sort of thing that keeps them going. It helps distract them and, and give them a break. It's more of a break, not, you don't want them distracted, but it gives them a mental break and it helps them feel like they have a little bit piece of home. So, um, even if they come back and they get it later, it helps them. It, it still makes them feel like, yeah, you thought of them because you're writing every day or every few days, however often you want to do. Um, you could even do a video recording each day a video and, and put that together and give it to them when they get back to talk about your day or some things um, from your day. That would be a great way to, a great gift for them when they come home or, you know, joining the journal and sending it to them. All right, number four, send something off. So we'll kind of prep before, write a letter, a send off, just so they have one thing to take with them, especially if you know it takes a little while for meal to get wherever they're going. Um, something they can read, you can write on it. And don't read until you're you know, traveling or you're there, whatever. Um, for me, if you know there's certain holidays they're missing, plan ahead. So yes, you have to plan a little bit yourself and this goes with the shopping. Um, I didn't fully get to do it all the way I wanted to because this was a little bit sooner for us. Um, but, you know, do a card. I wrote him a birthday letter and I said, don't open till your birthday. If he happens to be back in time, great. He can open it later. He can still have some giggles and be like, oh, that's awesome. But write and date it on those days and write ahead um, for birthdays or anniversaries or special occasions of some sort um, and how, send those with him. Don't do a whole ton of stuff to send with them, but a couple little things to send with them, okay? Um, having that one little token or that letter or a picture with a little note on it for them to hold on to, something from home will help through the, the travel and it will help you rest assured that you sent them with a little something um, and it means a lot to them because they're gonna have like bare bones for a while, they're gonna be tired, they're gonna be traveling, they're gonna want a little bit of home with them. It's like a blanket, it's comforting and it'll help give them that encouragement to keep going. So make sure you write a great letter for them that way. All right, number five, my last tip here. Um, lean on other wives. Make sure you're connected with FRG or groups or you have, you know, maybe you do yoga classes and you have some yoga buddies. 
make sure, I mean, it's really important to connect with other military wives um, or other military uh, spouse if you're male and you have, there, there are military spouses that are, are the males too um, and the wives are off. So either way, connect with those spouses and don't be afraid to lean on them. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to say, hey, let's go do something because you're going through this together. Um, and just as they have their buddies back and they're supporting each other on deployment, that's what we are here as wives is to be that buddy and to be that support and have your back when you're going through this, okay? Um, so be sure to find those people. There are a lot of times there are churches that are really wanting to be there. There's a lot of wives that have gone before who would be happy if you want someone who's, you know, seasoned and had, um, I know you could talk to a pastor from your local church and say, hey, is there anyone in the congregation that um, they're a spouse of a military member? That was huge for me of being kind of adopted and having a family take me out to get Christmas tree and things like, you know, some fun things that we made memories. We learned about, we heard, so I heard some of their stories of when they were in the military and they weren't even the same branch, but it was huge to feel like I was a part of their family. And I want you guys even here to feel that, that you are a part of a larger family and um, I'm here to support you. I'm here to kind of give you that knowledge and um, encourage you as well. So please feel free to reach out if you guys have questions, need a little support. If you have a spouse that is deployed, and you're just like, I'm trying to connect and it's hard, I get it. Um, especially for me being new to our area, I am getting connected. I've always just been bold. I love people. I love helping people and I love being connected to people. So it makes it a little bit easier for me. I also like to be a hermit sometimes. <laughs> I have learned that. So it is really important for you to um, get connected and lean on them because you're going to need it. You're going to have some hard days and that is okay. You're not alone. And I think that's the most important to thing to remember is you're not alone and that will really help. Okay. So those are some of my top five tips to kind of prepare you for deployment um, and get you ready and kind of kind of during. We can I can do a whole other video talking about some other other things to do like if you know they're being deployed some tips and tricks that way too. If you're interested in that, be sure to comment below. So I hope this video is helpful for all of you. I know deployments can really suck, <laughs> and it can be really hard and it can be emotional. Um, I guess that's another little side tip is, yes, we want to be strong for them. And this could be different for your, your spouse. So kind of just know what they prefer. I know my husband, he had said, you know, don't be afraid to cry. He, he knows I don't always like to cry. I don't like to cry in front of people. It's just, I will, it happens, but it's usually when I'm at like my breaking point, um, or I just can't hold it in anymore. So I don't, I like to be strong for him because he is so strong for me. Um, we just, we like to compliment each other and I, I am happy for him and I am excited. However, he, um, always says, you know, don't be afraid to say you're sad. Don't be afraid to cry because it shows you care. Um, I know he doesn't want me being all weepy all the time and, and that's not me. Um, I try to stay positive, but if that is you and they are saying, okay, why are you being clingy? Why you? just go to your friends. But there, there's other wives who are going to understand. Um, I can be clingy if I'm feeling needy or feeling um, kind of scared or really alone. I can be that way. That does happen. That is just a natural because we're meant to be with people. Um, it's not the same just being with your dog. I think she gets tired of me too. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's why having those connections will help and be sure to show those emotions that you care. Be sure to write that you miss them, um, you love them, and you can let them know if you had a tough day because they're gonna have tough days. It'll also allow them to kind of share how they're feeling, what they're struggling with with you if you're being a little bit vulnerable with them. So you don't always have to be tough. Um, I'm, I'm really speaking to those who, like myself, try to put on a brave face and be tough. It is okay to not always be tough because you're gonna have some tough days and you're gonna have days you're gonna break down, okay? There's times I've posted some pictures where I had to walk away and, and leave 
Um, I remember specifically when he went to, um, when I had visited him when he was at AIT and I had to leave and it was right, right when COVID hit and right before everything was shut down. And I knew something was coming just from how everything was panning out for me for work. And I went, I don't know the next time I'm going to see him. I broke down. I remember breaking down too. Well, going down memory lane. But I remember breaking down too in front of family. Um, my mother-in-law, she was pretty much holding me up when we were walking away from the last night when I knew right before he went off to AIT. And I know she was trying to reassure me and it was huge. However, for me, what hurt so much was I had these dates in mind of when I knew I'd see him next. And I didn't know the end date from when I was going to see him again. And that was really, really hard. And I knew that was going to make what deployment would be hard, um, not knowing those dates. And it is. But it was okay for me to be vulnerable because it showed I needed that support. It helped them understand. I'm going to get teary-eyed. It helped them understand where I was coming from. And it helps those around you know how best to support you when you're going through that because you, they may be missing anniversary. They may be missing birthdays, um, their birthday, your birthday, things you want to, you like to celebrate, um, for your kids first step, or they're going to miss so many things. You know, know that they know that too. So it's okay to show that, but it's also okay to show that to those around you because that's how they know you're hurting. And that's how they know they need to come and help lift you up and support you and be with you. And that's okay too. Definitely accept that, accept the help, accept the support because that is what is going to help you enjoy this life, this military life and make you the best military wife and friend possible. So hopefully this is helpful. I know I got a little emotional there at the end, but these are some tips for you guys. I know it's a little longer than normal. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your day and um, be sure again to like if you like this video, want to see more like it and be sure to comment below if you have questions, want to see more like it as well or other videos you're looking for or needing some support and just prayers. I'm a huge believer in praying for others as well. Um, I'd be happy to add if your spouse is on deployment, add you guys to my list as well. The other thing is be sure to click the subscribe, but also that bell button um, so you make sure you are notified of our next videos. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.